So, um, anybody have any questions about workshops, things like that, before we begin? Do we have any questions? You can just activate your microphone and talk or say yes, so you're going to go to the queue. So, we have like four or five people who are saying yes. Dan, you can start. Uh, start your microphone and ask the question. Uh, hello, Professor. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I was uh, wondering in the workshop, we are using directly the return from the function to assign a dynamic memory. But in the class section, you demonstrate an example using an uh, in integer pointer to assign one uh, address first, one new int first, and then you use the new int to create another new int array. Or can I ask what's the difference? Can um, I just use an integer so, variable first? Oh, so you're saying, okay, so it's, well, you're saying that it's, so um, say, let me see if we have something over here that can show. So something like people. this. So let me just write an example. Okay, so to, to see if I can understand. Okay, first of all, everybody uh, show uh, because people are asked, like many people have questions that they want to ask. I'm not going to poll now. But um, if you cannot see the screen and it's not uh, big enough for you, let me know right now using your microphone for me to increase the font. No one? All right. So, um, so let me just, uh, what do I do in here? Mm. Let me just save this as student main. Zheng Yu, please mute yourself. Zheng Yu Yang, please uh, mute yourself. Actually, let me do it. And I see Johnny Chung is in here, listen only. I asked please not to join as listen only. Um, if you are coming listen only, then you can watch the recording later on. You don't need to be here. Listen only doesn't do anything, okay? So I would appreciate it if you are coming in as listen only to uh, click on the speaker, deactivate your audio and come back with a microphone. Thank you. All right, so in here is gonna be student main dot cpp and i'm going to go back to the uh, program answering dan's question so Dan, what you're saying is this for example in here i have something like uh, um, i'm going to call it um, boolean allocate and in here i have int pointer let's call it ints okay and in here i have an integer num so in here if i actually say something like ints so you're saying it is happening something like this it's doing ints is equal to how how did it so it returns it here something like that int pointer and allocates it like this is this what you're saying so it says int pointer mm, the, mm, ints equals to new int num and returns int is that what you're saying dan uh yes from your previous class example you for example the one we asked user for how many integers you want and we have to create an in pointer cnt and equals to new ints and then we store the user input into the integer pointer cnt and then you will do what you're doing now in so, integer pointer num equals to new int bracket the integer pointer. Yeah, so let me just bring it up so we can see if we are actually. So I think I had it someplace dynamic memory. Is it this one? So this is what you're talking about, yes, right? Yes, that's the one. Yes. So you are saying in here, this, as I mentioned, this correct syntax mm. was a stupid thing to do. Mm. So a single integer. So we never do that. It was just for sake of example. See, so in so let me just put like it like example, this. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna uh, save this. Let me save this here with a proper thing, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. So okay. the correct way of this one, DMA, um, DMA sample. Let's call it DMA sample. Cpp, and I'm gonna put it zero one. 
dma.cpp. So in here, the correct way of doing it is actually this. So for a single one, we never do a single thingy. It's, it was just to show you if you are to do an allocation for a single entity, that's the syntax. But for an I integer, it does that. not make sense at all to do something like that. You follow? Yes. Oh, okay. So we just do, if we're creating some codes, we just follow like the workshop to create an integer variable and use that for allocation. Uh, okay size of the allocation, direct? correct? I see. Use, it, use it for size of allocation. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And oh, sometimes okay. allocations happen inside the functions, like I mentioned over here. So mm. I could have something like this, like allocate, let's do it like this, allocate, um, I'm going to say ints, and in here I'm going to say see out how many ints, and I'll do like that, something like go to new line and show a, a prompt. Then I'm going to say over here int uh, num, and I'm going to say c in, let's uh, make it like that. Then I'm going to say c in num, and then in here I'm going to say int num and return it. Okay? So if I, and uh, let's uh, ha have the size back too. So, or, or, or I can do over something like int num and remove this one. So in here I can have an integer, let's say size, and I have integer pointer values. Then to allocate, I can say values is set to allocate ints and size. You see what I just did? Yes, yes. So I, I kind of you know. put my, if, I, if you want to keep allocating different size of things and you want to put it in a function to be comfortable, this is what you do. So you say integer pointer values. Uh, you pass the values out, so these values will have the address of the allocated memory, and size will be set to the number of integers uh, that that uh, whoever it is uh, set it over there. And in here, I can have something like cn dot cn dot ignore. To make sure that the thing is clear afterwards. Are we good with this? But if we uh, send past the argument, the size variable to the allocate ins, what it would take? Because we will still pop up to ask for user input. Then, then so, so will you we mean instead of reference, put uh, an integer passed over here? Uh, no, because in the in the allocate ins, we will be see out how many ins, and then we will have the user input num. And then, but in the main, we are or we are also passing an integer variable size to the function. You are not passing. You are not passing size. You are receiving size. Oh, I see. I it's understand a reference. That. Oh, yeah. I am I setting the size. Enough. That's why I didn't set them to zero, just to show you that these are not set to anything. They're going to be oh, set. I understand that now. So, so in here, I'm going to say I'm going to say memory will be in values and uh, number of ints in size. Okay? Okay. Now, another version of this would have been this, something like this. We could have something like a Boolean uh, allocate ints. Okay? Now I can actually pass a point, uh, reference of a pointer in here. So, what I can do, so get the value and size over here. So I could I could have the exact same syntax that I have over here, like that. All right. And in here I'm saying Boolean. Ah, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. So now I want to send the num out. So that's gonna be integer reference num that's gonna go out. Now I want to send the ints out. Because I want to send the ints out, I should get a reference of a pointer in here. So I have to say integer pointer reference uh, ints or int vals, int uh, dynamic int, ints, 
and let's call this one dynamic ints uh, dynamic ints and in here I'm gonna say return return uh, dynamic ints being not equal to null PTR got it so if I want to use this one so the equivalent of this so in here if I wanted to see if it's successful or not I had to write if values not values is equal to null PTR now in here I have to say see out uh, allocation failed okay but I can have the exact same procedure done now like this I can say if allocate ints in here pass values pass size and I say if not allocate values and I put it over there so line number 33 to 30 30, 30 to 32 does what line number 25 to 28 does. We understand this, then, Dan? Yes, I understand it now. Thank yeah. you, Professor. Okay, but be careful, people. You have to pass a reference of a pointer to set it. If you just do it like this, it becomes a local variable. You are not passing anything back. You have to make sure it's a reference of a pointer. Otherwise, it won't work. Um, everybody okay with this? Hopefully, uh, people. So let me just copy people who are in, uh, who said yes for uh, questions, and I'm going to ask them one by one. Then I can actually ask. So I'm going to have uh, open a text pad over here and put the names of the people who said yes in here. So these are the queue of the peop of people. So Dan already question answered. Uh, uh, Yvonne, you have a question. Ivan, am I pronouncing your name properly? Is Ivan here at all? You have to unmute yourself. Is Ivan here or it is disconnected? Oh, Ivan is gone. Ivan is gone. So in here it's going to be gone. Is Ivan gone? Uh, yeah okay so uh next one you have a question uh, just misclick so uh can that's, uh, very pass. Fine. that's very fine if you misclick just as right now my friend did over here actually say that you misclicked and jasper you are here listen only i don't like that please uh uh disconnect and connect back with with microphone i need to uh hear people call Pehan, you had a question? Oh, thank you. It was Miss a misclick? Click. Yeah, sorry. No, don't be sorry. That's very fine. Sanam, are we okay? Do we have a question? Okay. Oh. Sanam, do we have a question? Oh, oh, okay. People are... Uh, you know you have a microphone right when you are writing in chat let me just show you what happens this is what I see I don't see the chat chat is on the other computer over there so and also let me just turn on my mic my my screen so you can see me hello everyone uh, let me put it over here there we go and there we go okay so yeah so um, in here I have uh, in here I have my uh, polls and at the other screen over there, actually, at the other screen over there, I have my chat, so I don't see the chat. So, um, so let me just do it one more time. Anybody have a question before we begin? So in here, I'm going to say any questions. Any questions? Honey, are you with me? 
okay all right probably she is i don't know um oh, oh there you go no she's not here anyways so um so uh, yeah so that's that um now let's uh uh start with uh uh so i'm just gonna put this thing as dynamic memory allocation so in here i'm gonna say uh calling overload in line six on line six and this one is calling overload on line uh, 14 and this is 0 2 DMA so 0 2 I'm gonna say DMA um, DMA in a function DMA returned returned using a function dot CPP okay so if we ever want to modularize it and get it somewhere else that's what we are going to do so now uh, let's talk about uh, uh, and save this one too that's zero one all right so uh, a quick review of what we have talked about last time a quick review of what we've talked about last time we talked about where is my student main this is the one we talked about encapsulation we talked about uh, uh, oh yes we have it over here so we talked about encapsulation uh, we talked about uh, um, uh, constructors destructors and we had some ex uh, examples of uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation um, we gave an example of a student and we say a student has uh, um, uh, series of uh, uh, specifications that we need to have and we selected name and student number and then uh, we create we, we set the student using the keyboard so from console and then we set the student uh, um, through other programs so through uh, other functions other functions okay so um, and in each one with the dynamic memory allocation um, but uh, set was doing dynamic memory allocation through uh, set without a uh, without uh, uh, from console did dynamic memory allocation by reusing the set through other functions which receives uh, received the name and a student number and how we did it uh, we made sure that before we do anything we deallocate and we talked about deallocation over there I don't know why it's, it's, it's it is not removed over here we said that the fact that name is null or not is already taken care of by delete itself so you do not need to ever check to see if something is null before you delete it just delete it if it is null delete will ignore that null and delete the um, and delete the uh, the memory uh, that is pointed by the pointer and if uh, it is uh, it is null, it's not going to carry it and just ignore it uh, as therefore the allocate doesn't need to be in a uh, if statement uh, are we okay with this Hi, Professor. Yes. So for line 33, uh, do we still need to assign null pointer to m underscore name? Oh. Is it necessary? Um, because it is in a function, uh, uh, because it is in a function that can be called anywhere, okay? because it is in a function that can be called anywhere and we do not know what happens after deallocate when we are implementing the deallocate you must follow the rules and regulations to do this if later on you call deallocate and immediately don't set it to uh, um, let's let's put it this way let's say 
let's say in here I am receiving um, the values that are 51. Are you with me, Kwanko? Yeah. Okay. So let's say in here I am I have a restrict size that is let's say 21. Okay. All right. And when set happens, I want to make sure that it's not more than 21 characters. So what do I do? As soon as the user enters the get line over here, what I will do, oh, somebody's asking to join the team, so let me just accept them. Sorry. I am on the computer at the same time. There we go. All right. So, so I will say over here, if uh, cin.failed, it means they entered more than 20 characters. Are we okay with this? Yes. All right. So in here, I'm going to say C out. Uh, the name is too long. Okay. And I'm going to change my set because it is coming from console to return a Boolean for success. And I'm going to change it over here to Boolean so, so I know if it's successful or not. And then I'll come back over here. I'm going to have Boolean uh, uh, success is equal to true. And if I come over here, I'm going to say name is too long. And I'm going to say end L. And I'm going to say C out uh, um, sorry, I'm going to say success is equal to false. Okay, and then otherwise I will get the student number because if they enter the name correctly uh, too long, this name is embedded and I don't care. I don't want to put anything else in it. That's my logic. I want to set it to an embedded empty state. Do we understand this? Yes. Okay, now. Now what I need to do over here is because it's too long, I don't want the name, correct? So I'm going to say deallocate. Was it deallocate? Yeah. Deallocate. Okay. To put the, to put the student in a recognizable empty state okay so when the print actually prints checks to see name is null if i did not in deallocate set the name to null i could not do such a thing with deallocate do we understand this uh got it so if we want to um uh, like it is a do while loop or something uh, we, we will need to get it to a uh, null pointer. But let, so let's actually it. put it, there is a, what you are saying is right. But um, have you seen the stop signs in the intersections? Right? You've seen stop signs in intersections, right? If you are going with your car and getting to a stop sign and there is no one in the intersection, you know the intersection is completely empty. Do you stop or you go? You stop, right? It's the same thing over here. This is the rule that you have to follow because if you don't, someday you're going to make a mistake and you're going to pay for it dearly. What do you have to follow? If the delete you are doing is not in the destructor and it is in a function and nothing else is happening to the pointer, you must delete the pointer. You must set the pointer to null after deletion. Always. Okay. Got Quite it? Enough. Thank you. Okay. And thank you for the question. It's actually a very, very important question. Okay. Anyone else? Professor? Yes. But if we have already created the destructor, then we don't need to like deallocate it every time, right? This deallocate has nothing to do with the, the subject of what we were saying had nothing to do with destruction. Destruction happens in a foreign object, in a foreign function, in main, where a student is born and dies. Here, it's within the logic of our student. 
when we are setting it so in here when actually student is being set manually so if I actually say over here s dot set like that and I set the student like this and I run the program build errors seriously what is the builder uh, uninitialized memory student number oh that's not a thing what is the other one let me see what the other one is oh as in here we have to return success return success and actually we don't have to print it we shouldn't print anything in here I think or um, yeah that's good so SDNO is here and that is null it is being passed uh, success is passed out let's do it one more time so now take a look at here when we actually run this it comes so s gets created no problem that's the constructor name gets null steps SDN or everything in here now I'm setting the student so it comes into set sets everything and it says name and I do get line so now it's getting someone's name and let's say the name is this okay that's actually a real name that's the longest name in the world okay if I actually hit enter what's going to happen it comes in here because it passed 21 CN will fail and it's gonna tell me name is too long let me just bring it to the right and this one left and put this one over here and bring this down all right so now because because that happened it says success is false sets success to false now it says deallocate it deletes sets it to null pointer and comes out and it does nothing else it tries to set it which is wrong I shouldn't have done this let me take this out setting should only happen if it is successfully set although nothing would have happened because it's null but anyways so let, let's recompile so let me just come right down to here it says that it, it couldn't make it so I'm gonna come down here one more time um, uh, let's come to deallocate run and come to deallocate a name that is very 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 long and I hit enter it comes to deallocate deallocates the deall deallocates and set to null and then comes returns false as success comes out over here now it wants to show it when it comes to show because name is null it's gonna say this object is invalid so it has nothing to do with our destructor the object is still living so our class having a destructor or not having a destructor has nothing to do with me having a deallocate or not because I have the deallocate it's just said it makes sense to reuse it and call it in a destructor but this deallocates job is to deallocate and put the object in a safe empty state do, am I making sense yes please. all right anyone else any question Any question? Professor, one more thing I'd like to ask. Go ahead. Uh, like in this sample, we are just uh, using the SCR copy to copy the name into a dynamically allocated name. Yes. But if you want to like uh, copy the contents of a structure into a pointer, can we do that? No. You are saying, uh, you are saying like, could I do something like this? You are saying, can I? in main for example I have student s and I have student r can I do this is that what you're saying I mean like in uh, student s we have the structure like name roll number grade and student r we have created a 
a structure that is a, like a pointer in which we have to dynamically allocate the memory. Yeah, so you are saying R and S are type student and I want to set R to what S is. Yeah. So, this brings us to uh, something that we're going to learn later about constructors and stuff. But I'm just going to quickly explain it to you so you'll see exactly why we cannot do that. And again, that that's a beautiful question. So, <clears throat> to actually answer your question, <clears throat> My apologies. This is what I have to do. Just a second. I'm going to come over here. Oh, it's not there. trying to find something in here mm. let me show you something else give me a second please yeah it's here that's interesting oh that's that's the wrong one my apologies I was in the wrong repository. Notes archive. There we go. Found it. Sorry about that. <coughs> so this is the problem. Bad copying. So um Take a look at this. This is what we have, correct? So we have our, in this student, I have the data is the name that is outside. And we, we don't care about size, just assume that that's the student number. Are we okay with this thing? Uh, uh, who was it? Navnur? Navlin. Oh, okay. Is that uh, Navlin? Navlin, sorry, Navlin. Is this, is this okay? Do you, do we, are yeah. we okay with this? So now imagine I have another one and I try to copy the other one over here. So I have B is equal to A, something like that. Okay, what's going to happen? It's going to copy the address from one to the another and then two of them are going to point to the same one. So the name will not be copied, but the content of two structures will. So when the destructor is called, the first destructor destroys the, the second, the, the, na the name. When the destructor of the other one is called, it's going to crash. Do we understand this? Yeah. So you can only, only, only do copying between structures as a whole if your structures contain everything within them. So this is your structure, and in your structure, you have everything in there. There is no pointer. If that's the case, you can copy this into another structure with the exact same size and everything and uh, data that it has. And because everything is within the structure, it doesn't matter. Everything's going to get copied perfectly because everything will move to their corresponding attributes. But in the other case, you had your value outside. And because your value was, was, not, so, so was not inside the class, you had it actually outside of the class somewhere. When the copying is actually happening over here, what you have at right side is only the pointer that is going to get copied and nothing else. And because of that, whoops, not like that. And because of that, only the pointer gets, get, gets copied and therefore they point to the same place and copying is not happening properly. So be careful, people, with dynamic memory allocation. You cannot set one structure to another. You have to 
do a deep copy we say okay for now don't try to make copy and I'm sure that your um, your workshop doesn't require it when we go further we'll understand what is the difference between shallow and deep, co deep copying what you see at right over here is we call it shallow copying <clears throat> in here shallow copying leads to failure therefore we have to do a deep copy that we don't still know what it is we're gonna learn it later um, are we okay down to this point all right okay any other question any questions? All right. Okay. So uh, let me just take a look at um, what we needed to cover today. And uh, uh, if we don't have anything else to go through for today, um, I can help you with workshops. Or if you want me to, I can talk about workshop too. I kind of go through it but let me just clear this all and, and close this and come over here and take a look at of what we have so uh, we need to see what do we have here uh, we go to weekly schedule and in weekly schedule we're gonna see dynamic memory allocation member functions and privacy we talked about that we know what they are and constructions and destruction and we are right now in week let me see which week we are in we are right now in week in week three so we are in week three and these are the stuff we need to know so um, let me just make sure so uh, type references and overloaded we did that dynamic memory allocation we went through it just want to make sure there is no other s topics that I need to talk about memory leak allocation deallocation we talked about that nothing over there I just want to make sure that there is nothing left that I missed and those people who study before rare students who study before you come if you see uh, uh, there is uh, something that I did not uh, explain please uh, please let me know so member functions and privacy with member functions and privacy we have all these good stuff modifying communication links set operating looking for all oh, input output good so we got to talk we talked about input so you know what is ignore get line and everything is and see out same thing so see out with fill so we can now format stuff so I'll talk about that in a second uh, so I'm going to actually go through formatting and sh tell you exactly how everything is uh, done and set. Um, uh, any questions before we begin? This is not going to take much. It's very simple. I'll, I'll go through it very quickly and you'll see exactly what it is. <coughs> okay, so let's talk about formatting. Okay, so in here I'm going to save it and uh, I'm going to put this one as... Uh, this should be two and here it's going to be three uh, student main zero three let me delete this student main from here and I'll go over here zero three student main save it okay all right um, and stop this and bring up the PRG so we already talked about CN and how CN works and uh, uh, all the uh, ignore and uh, receiving characters failures and all those things we talked about it there is nothing to uh, go over in that aspect let me just make sure that <coughs> Yeah, and we have get line and we have get, so I'm going to explain what get is. Get uh, extracts only one um, thing, is, and it has many different overloads that uh, I will talk about. 
but for now all you need is get and get line but I will mention it <clears throat> okay so let's bring up over here so for um, talking about get so uh, from uh, uh, the cns get line and get function so uh, with uh, um, uh, the with cn let's say I have something like int v over here uh, and uh, character um, str and character ch and I'm gonna have over here say I don't know um, uh, 20 and set everything to null okay so c in um, how does it work first of all the the overloaded extraction operator uh, is polymorphic which means whichever you use so if you do so so again so in here when you are doing int you don't need to mention anything you simply go c in uh, v and it knows it's an integer when you are actually uh, getting a c string the c string works the exact same way which is but but which you actually uh, you do c in uh, str and and it is polymorphic it will receive it and uh, same thing for the for the uh, uh, for the character so when you're getting a single character they all work the same way <clears throat> but there is one thing you need to know about this um, all these things so all so the, the the extraction operator that you get values out of C in so I'm gonna write over here extraction operator the extraction operator or the operator with CN always leaves at least one backslash n behind in keyboard okay which means <clears throat> when this CN is left one new line remains when this SDR is read one new line at least one new line remains when one character is read at least one new line remains so what happens to that new new line another thing that extraction operator has for all its variable for all its overloads other than uh, character so C in for all the overloads other than character skips leading white spaces which means when you are reading an integer when you are reading an integer I'm gonna over here see out V and then in here I'm gonna say C out str and in here I'm gonna go C out CH now you'll see exactly what I mean C out CH okay so what happens over here except uh, C in C in an operator extraction operator for all overloads other than care skips leading white spaces what does it mean it means if I if I write over here um, uh, if, let's let's actually compile and run and see you'll see exactly what I mean so when it's actually running over here it, it wants to receive an integer I can do this I can press tab I can go to new line and I can enter 25 and it is going to read 25 so it skips all white spaces that are coming through do we understand this all right and it works the exact same way for C string so when it's actually receiving a C string as you see uh oh if I enter space tab and everything and I say hello over here and I hit enter as you will see it will actually read hello so it will get uh, skip all the 
leading spaces but as we mentioned all of these will leave at least a backslash n so a backslash n is right now in the keyboard that's why when i get into this one oh it actually so this one does it too i didn't know so let's try i'm gonna go space tab and i'll put a and i hit enter perfect so it actually does for all of them good so not except except other than uh, for all the overloads skips leading white spaces there you go usually you don't use insertion operator if, when you're overloading stuff um, and uh, i really uh, didn't know that so that's that but The, there are problems with these things which means for example for a string over here if I actually get to the string and I start entering the strings over here problem is that let me just go run right to here problem is that for this one I'll enter it fine for this one if I say hello there and I hit enter as you will see T will come to CH because the rest of the stuff are remained in the keyboard so the the space is skipped but T is going to go into CH. So you got to be careful. Characters, um, uh, sorry, uh, white space characters are delimiters for um, uh, extraction operator and C strings. And that's uh, something that we need to make sure to understand. So uh, white space characters are delimiters. for uh, all delimiters, yeah. Um, are we okay with this? <clears throat> all right, now let's talk about get function and it different overloads, uh, versions of overload. <clears throat> get by itself uh, uh, does not skip uh, white space characters. So cin.get, cin.get, <clears throat> will not skip white space characters. Take a look. So if I get do over here get, and I write uh, ch is equal to get, as you will see now, The get of mine, actually it's a good idea to put these things separate. Let me just, uh, to do the get separate other than those things. So let me just take these off over here. I'm going to exit, save it, and I'm going to go C in. So it's 04, 04, is it 04? 04, dash uh, C in and extraction and extract okay dot cpp so that's seen an extract I'm gonna bring it back up let me close these and please stop me immediately just just start talking right away you don't need to raise hand or anything like that and if you write a text over there I won't be able to see anything so uh, don't do that okay uh, yeah I'm um, going back to polls. There we go. So just activate your microphone and stop me. For get, how things happen. First of all, get is only for strings. So no integer, nothing. So get is only all get functions are to receive C strings. Okay. C strings and characters. Which means I can say over here uh, C out care. And I can go uh, CH is equal to C in dot get. And C out CH and do it like this so if I run the program uh, you'll see that it actually receives the character oh sorry so let's put this one at left all right 
So, oh, I went to new line. Bad boy, I am. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, so, so when I enter over here, for example, A, it's going to receive an A and send it back. There is another way of doing it, which is C out car with reference. which is, uh, I'm going to say C in, uh, C H, uh, C in dot get, and I just put one character over there. So this works the exact same way like the other one. Obviously, this is not going to work because the C H over here will leave a character and this will pick, leave a, uh, a new line, and that's going to actually show the new line, which, which we don't want. So in here, if I put an asterisk before and after just to see what is the character I am receiving? That's what happens. So I'll put it over here just to see how it's going to work. So yeah, so it comes over here and seeing get gets the first one. So in here, I'm going to put A and hit enter. Obviously, it's going to get the A and print it out. Therefore, I'm going to have an A printed. But because now I have a backslash N in there, it's going to not stop on this and pa pass through it. And therefore, uh, a new line will be displayed and nothing will be received. Do we understand this? Somebody said no in the last one when I said everybody's OK. So uh, the person who said no, I just missed it. Uh, you can ask the question now. Okay, so how do we fix this? We always flush after we get a single thing. So in here, I'm going to go cn.ignore. That's a little too, <laughs> um, too much. So now if I actually do it, everything is good. I'm going to copy and I'm going to put it over here. So now if I run the program, you will see that it actually runs through perfectly and I'll put A over here and I'll put B over here and it receives them both and we're good. Are we okay with this? All right. So the next thing we want to do, and I see, and I see you. If the, first of all, I, I'll, tell, I'll tell you that those people who do not respond, I can actually see. Um, uh, and it's going to be all recorded, so please respond to the, to the, to the poll so I know you're actually listening to this. Um, next thing we need to, uh, to learn is uh, uh, get with, uh, with strings. So if I want to actually get a string, so these are all characters, that's very fine. And now in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to uh, put only one character as we did, so we know that. Um, I'm going to put over here, I'm going to say 0, 5 get single care dot cpp for the next one just assume that uh, that I'm gonna do it like this so I'm gonna put it over there and now in here I'm gonna say C out str and in here I'm gonna say C in dot get so it works exactly like get line uh, forget about stream buff we don't need we don't need those. Uh, so this is the one, as you see. It receives a string. It receives a st the size and what to stop at. So with this get, I can say C in get, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the uh, so in here I'm going to say C string. And in here I'm going to say str, and I'm going to put over here 21. So and I'm going to say over here, uh, I'm going to do another another get to just show you something over here. So it works exactly like get line. But the difference is that when you run this, you will notice that unlike get line, get will not, get will not uh, eat 
with the new line so if I say over here for this is the first one now in here I'm gonna say string and hit enter and as you see it will not eat the new line not only that it will not fail if you have a very long uh, string to read it will not fail and the 20 the 21st character will remain in buffer so the difference between get and get line is that will not eat the delimiter and will not fail on max do we understand this obviously you can use get to deal with delimiters so in here I can actually do something like uh, say so I'm gonna do another one over here another get was it explain this again uh, now then you have to speak louder or put the microphone in front of your mouth so I can actually hear very very low but not the uh, like, the delimiter thing no I can't hear you let me just make it louder okay tell me one more time like always being red can you explain again oh explain what again oh uh, like how the o is being read okay did we say 21 over here let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 21 you see that so the str well if I actually show the str afterwards let me just show it to you so I'm gonna say C out <coughs> str so I'm gonna put the, the string inside the the thing like the other one and run that program one more time so I'm gonna run it in here so in here I'm gonna say uh, character so a and then in here I'm gonna say a very long string to read and hit enter as you see it the, the SDR is null terminated perfectly and luckily we have O again over here so so it will not terminate it so there is no danger it actually null terminates it perfectly exactly 20 characters and 21st will be null but the next one will not be eaten it remains in the keyboard and is picked up with the next get ch which you see and always printed over here and the rest is still in keyboard are we okay with this yes perfect so <clears throat> so that's that one and also what we can do we can actually uh, uh use get get with uh um with uh, delimiters to uh to read up to certain thing and do something about it which means uh, um, I'm gonna do this just let me take a look the, let me show this so in here I'm gonna say 0 6 get with CSTR and len dot CPP so that's that one Now, see what happens if I, for example, do comma in here. In here, I'm going to say delimiter is. Okay. So, now if I run the program, I can, that's A for the other one. And in here, I'm going to say hello there, comma, and then comes more. Okay. If I hit, as you see, hello there is picked up by get and the delimiter is left into keyboard there you, therefore I know it was a comma are we okay with this all right uh, that's all about get the other things the other overloads about get too rich for our blood we're gonna learn after we uh, understand I stream and O stream but uh, that's uh, how it is uh, so for the <clears throat> and that's get so 
forget line you already know it is exactly like this but the difference is that let me just write it over here just to see so zero seven I'm gonna say uh, get with C string uh, len and delimiter dot CPP okay so with get line with get line it will let's say will will know it will it eat the delimiter and will fail on maximum so if i say get line i better get a comma between 21 if i don't it's it's uh, it's going to fail so if i write if i run this exactly like the other one and as you will see that it uh, um, i'm gonna say i'm gonna say character after delimiter is let me just stop it and run it again so in here i'm gonna say control c and run it again so now take a look when i run this i'm gonna go a over here and i'm gonna say hello there comma and after if i hit enter you will see hello there is picked up comma is eaten and character after delimiter is a that's that not only that if i have a very long thing happening over here i'm going to say if not c in which is the exact same thing as or i can say c in even yeah no i can say c in else i'm going to say c out too long Too long must flush keyboard which I'm not going to do because we are at the end of the program but that's something that uh, we need to know so now if I run the program what happens is this I'll go a over here and I'm gonna say a very long thing to read without comma in sight and I'm going to put the comma here because it gets to comma it's going to actually fail it will place the stuff inside so the 21 the, the 20 characters will be placed in the uh, string but uh, it will fail so you can detect it that's the difference between get line and get for the rest it is identical are we okay with this All right, so that's all about get and get line and uh, ignore you already know we don't need to talk about it so uh, i'm gonna write over here uh, zero eight get line and now let's talk about output so output is quite straightforward uh, it is an object oriented thing and, and, and you'll see exactly how it's going to look like so in here i'm going to say integer a is a set integer uh, IV integer value is uh, I'll put something one two three four and then we'll have double value double value will be one two th three point four five six seven eight nine um, yeah so uh, let's actually do one two three again one two three four five seven eight nine. okay so again see out if you if you print all these things with C out so string over here I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, Freddy okay and for CH I'm gonna put uh, an A and something like that so if I say C out SDR A and iv and dv and go to new line all these not ach all these values are going to get printed on basic 
rule that it has which means it's gonna try to print it the best way it can and for example for double values it is not a fixed thing it all depends what your values are um, the, let me set the DV to something else so I'm gonna say double DV is equal to 0 0.1 one two three and then go see out DV oh I have I, I already have it so I'm gonna do it this and run the program and as you see for the second so once it printed it like this the other time it printed it in scientific notation so it's not a fixed thing with doubles it just going to print it the best way that it can find it uh, match do we understand this unless we start making changes to see out we tell to see out how to print things okay so how do we do that this is how it's done with C out there are lots of properties one of them is called width so if I set C out dot width say to 20 so it affects what we have right after so in here I'm gonna say C out asterisk now in here I'm gonna say C out uh, uh, integer value or it could be a it could be string it doesn't make any difference or the double no difference whatsoever uh, and in here I'm gonna put another asterisk so now with is going to affect the the next printout okay so if I print this right now you will see that uh, one two one two three four is printed in 20 spaces do we understand this all right now and if I do it again you will see that the second one has no uh, width it's so width only affects the next one if I want the width to be 20 again I have to do it that way so in here now I can say see out uh, let's actually remove the first one just an asterisk after uh, I'll put it over here so I'm gonna say see out dot width in here I'm gonna say 40 and the second one in here I'm gonna just to show you I'm gonna put the SDR okay so if I run this else you see the second one is printed in 40 characters in 40 spaces are we okay with this all right now the next thing is let's let's actually uh, do more I'm gonna have it actually 40 and I'm gonna print the double okay like that and in here I'm gonna um, remove them remove some of them so make it something like this okay go one two three five, and we'll see after that okay um, something like that and the other one is going to be the CH and if we run this program you'll see that all of these things are printed in, in, in 40 now what I can do over here is this let's put this one one two three four five six seven eight nine and to it one more time and as you see it rounds the last one so this is six this was four this is five because the next one is six it actually up uh, uh, what should we call it uh, rounds it to up uh, and that's how it works now if I put over here C out dot uh, set F and in here I say iOS left take a look everything is going to be left justified now so by having left 
everything is going to get left justified. And for some reason, I picked that one out. I don't know why. That's left just. So if I want something to go left, I'll do it. And as you see, left affects everything after. So if you want it to go back to what it was before, and I can do it over here now, I can actually print this again. In here, I'm going to say uh, cout.setf iOS, right? And I just want to show you something, okay? So when I run this, this is what's going to happen. It's left, it's right. Are we okay down to this point? Now I'm going to move it back to left, and that's when it's going to get a little tricky. So I did a right, I did a left, and I'm going to do again another left. So it's left, right, left. So we expect the next one's going to go left. And as you see, it did not. It remained on right. You see that? So left doesn't work on right, but right works on left. That's very tricky. And I'll give you something, uh, uh, a rule behind it, so you don't have this type of problem. First of all, we understand what happened, right? First, I left justified. Then I right justified. It went OK. But if I wanted to bring it back to left, it wouldn't have come. So left cannot overwrite right, but right can overwrite left. Do we understand this? That's why after you do your justification and the fields that are printed, they do their stuff, always put it back the way it was by unsetting it. So have the same thing over here. And after all the justification, justification done, do an unset. So I am setting and then I am unsetting. Onset right, and in here I'm going to say onset left, and at the end I'm going to say onset left too. So always when you do your justifications, make sure that you actually put it back the way it was. If you do this, then all the justifications will actually happen the way you want. Uh, do we understand this? All right, so this Professor, is... Professor, can I ask something? Of course you can. Uh, if I use uh, the unset, but I use the wrong direction, what will happen? One more time. For example, Sorry. For example I set left first, but I accidentally write unset right. It's not going to work. Unset right, unset right, not left. See, You'll understand it. it. It's OP345, what's behind it. But whatever you set, you have to unset that one. So it will return fail? No, it won't return fail. You just, just nothing's going to happen. I see. Thank you. you. Explanation is difficult to tell you why. <laughs> okay? Explanation okay. is difficult to tell you why, but just accept that it's not going to fail the C out. Nothing is going to go wrong with it, but it's just not going to have effect. Okay? And I see Yusef, okay. Vladislav, Sanam, Navnur, Mantre, Mahdi, they do not respond to uh, polls, which is, I don't know, if you're not here, then just log off. Anyways, so that's that. And uh, the next thing is about doubles. So we have done this down to this point to left and right and width, and we know. And by the way, we can actually do something else. We can, the empty spaces can be filled with whatever you want. So for example, in this right, I can say uh, C out dot fill and I'm gonna fill it now with say uh, dots which means empty spaces should be filled with a dot and if I run the program oh it's set fill sorry I think I think it's set fill oh no it's not I'm just ch changing the wrong file my apologies. Uh, 
Okay, let me save this, go back to my program. And now in here, I'm going to say C out dot, I think, fill, yeah, a dot. And now if I actually run it, it's going to fill all the empty spaces with dots, I should see. But again, as you see, it's going to be everything that's going to get printed later. So if you, you want it back, set it back to space. So after it's done, because I want the rest to be set to whatever it is, I'm going to say C out dot fill. And I'm going to put a space over there. Now, if I run it, you will see that actually only this one's going to have a dot. Are we okay with this? All right. And the last thing I want to talk about over here is dealing with doubles only for doubles and nothing else. So with doubles, everything works exactly as how you saw. But the only thing that you need to know about it, doubles are two things. One, first of all, you have to take the tell to see at the tell to see out not to be flexible and always be fixed in format because doubles are printed differently as you saw based on its precision and how big or small they are. So before you want to format a double to something, you have to say C out the set F and you have to say iOS fixed. And after you set the C out to, uh, to fixed, uh, what you can do over here, you, now you can actually set precision. So I can say C out dot precision. And now I can say, for example, three. Now, if I do that, if I say C out DV, you will see that it actually prints it in uh, with three. Uh, or if I, I could make this one, so the, I'm going to set the precision again. Say to six this time and do another DV. And this time it's going to get printed with six digits after the decimal point. And that's printing doubles with any precision you want. Are we okay with this? And the final thing I'm going to tell you before we actually uh, be done with this thing is how to manually make uh, C in and C out fail. And also um, the fact that, let me just do it like this, so in here, I'm going to say um, there are actually, uh, first of all, let me tell you like about C out. C out has a, a brother and a sister, okay? Uh, because you, you want to have different types of printouts, and if C out fails, you don't want to get stuck not being able to print anything. You have stuff like something like you can actually say C log, and in here, I'm going to say printing double. Okay, and if C out fails, you want to say that C out fails. So in here, I'm going to say, for example, if C out dot fail, you can actually print on C error, C out failed. Okay, now don't be mistaken, C error and C log are just objects identical to C out with no special thing. There are just three different ones. One is for logging, the other one is for error. So if I run this program now, as you'll see, it's going to say printing double and uh, C in didn't fail, so nothing happens. Okay? Now, what? Uh, how can I actually... Uh, there are sometimes cases that you want to set C in and C out manually to an error state. Like, for example, all these logs that I have, so you see, I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to say mm, printing uh, double with s six digits after decimal point. 
So when I run this, it's going to show this. But now I don't want these logs to get printed. I want only doubles to get printed. If I want to do that, I can actually put C log manually in an error state. I can say C log dot set state iOS uh, fail. It was yeah, iOS fail. And now take a look. Why did it do noises so over the? Hmm, it should work. Why is it? Is it set state? Oh, fail bit, sorry, fail bit, not fail. Okay, so you put it fail bit. Now, if I actually run this, you will see that C logs are not printed anymore. So all the logs are removed because it's in an error state, it's not going to get printed. Now, if I see, set C out in, a, in an error state, fail bit, if I do something like this and run it, you will see the only thing that's going to get printed over here is C out is failed because C error is still there, but C log and C out are in error state. Obviously, I can clear them, which means I can come over here. So let's say I put this one up here, X, and I can bring it over here. So now in here, I can actually say C out dot clear. We can do that. Obviously, C log is going to come back to life and it's going to print it. So what are these? And these work exactly for C in and C out. So C in and C out, uh, the set state works for both C in and C out, which means this mechanism of going to a fail state can actually be used. For example, you are reading an integer. And when you are reading an integer, the integer must have values between uh, 10 and 20. And if it's anything other than that, that's an invalid integer. You can have your function return false. But if you want to follow standards of C++, you can actually set C in into a fail state if that happens. So if they, if they actually try to enter values that are less than more than uh, uh, whatever it is, instead of returning true or false, you can set C in in a failure state, and therefore you can actually detect it's an invalid value. Um, do we understand this? So essentially it's something like this. If I have something like int get int, so in here I'm going to have something like uh, void get int integer reference v and in here I'm going to say integer val and I'm going to say c in uh, into val then I'm going to say if val is less than 10 or val is greater than 20 then c in dot set state iOS fail bit. And that's it. And then in here, I'm going to say else. So this is going to be, if it is like this, set it to that one. Otherwise, set the value. So I'm going to call it V out for the value going out. So V out in here. Otherwise, I'm going to set the V out value to val. So in this function, let me just copy it. In here, I'm going to say 11 C out fail set state, set state dot CPP. And I'm going to go back in here and give you an example for C in just by itself. So now in here, I can actually have an integer. I'll say int. Uh, value and in here I'm going to say C out enter an int between 10 and 20 and I can say get int uh, value 
I'm going to say if C in, I'm going to say if C in, I'm going to say C out value is the value that I entered. In here, I'm going to say else invalid C out invalid invalid number and I'm gonna say C in dot clear so now this code of mine will work as follows when it runs like this it says if I actually enter over here garbage it's gonna say invalid number if I run the program and I write over here 30 it's gonna say invalid number if I write over here 15 now it's going to say value is 15 so now i use the fail mechanism of cn to pass information to my caller function do we understand this and that's it and that is all we need to talk about about cn and see out it is a, it was actually a very thorough session about it so uh now you're in the know and that's you can use see in and see out. Uh, any questions? Uh, hi, Professor. Go ahead. Uh, can I ask, like, for the precision part, can we do something to ignore the run up and then just print until that precision, but not rounding? Ignore it rounding? Yes. Impossible. It always rounds. There is a way, but it's too rich for our blood. But it's impossible. It rounds. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And another thing uh, about you said that we set the state to to fall, uh, fail. Is this the normal practice, or so should we do this, or instead of like creating another variable to to store the failing, or we should use the anything the set you like if the function. Because they have the function, it means it's normal practice. If it wasn't normal, they wouldn't put the function. <laughs> okay. It is. It is normal practice. It is very. It is uh, a little in in the professional thingy side of the story. So it's like when you do something like this, I would say, "Wow, this person know really knows how seeing works or see how it works." That's all. Okay. 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 Thanks. And I see many people are saying yes. I don't know yes is uh, if you have a question or you don't. So people who are saying yes, if you have a question, activate your microphone and talk. Uh, is there a cheat sheet for all this? Because there's many commands for CN. Cheat sheet? Yeah. Cheat sheet is what I just taught. <laughs> yeah. It's like to keep it all in mind. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. You know what we can do, Nikolai? Yep. You create the cheat sheet from all of the things that we have and share it with everyone. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Who else? Uh, professor, can I ask for the C in, can we still use the C er like C out? Because I don't see... For C in? No, C in doesn't have sisters and brothers. Oh, I see. C in is, a, is, a, is a the only child. <laughs> so if C in... C in... First of all, C in is an instance of I stream. C out is an instance of O stream. They are different objects. C in and C out. So let's put it like this. C in and C out are cousins. Okay. Okay. And uh, C out, they are triplets. They are um, three identical objects with three different names. Got it? So I can use C out with also C log and C error. You, you never C use C out and C error to print regular messages. C log should be literally for messages that are logged and need to be removed later. C error should be literally for the case that you will think that C out may fail and then you print it on C error. Okay? C so don't, so don't say I'm going to use C log from now on instead of C out. Use C out, but use log for logging and error for critical errors, not just the, the, like I would never over here put this invalid number in C error. I would never do that. 
Sea air is only used when you think sea out might die. Got it? Oh, can I ask when will sea out die then? When like will what sea out die? Circumstances like what, is, what would be the critical situation as you talk about? Uh, I'll, explain, we have to uh, use... I'll explain when we get to inheritance. I see. Thank you. Okay. Sea out has the capability of failing mostly because of its children in future. They are capable of failing. Okay? Let's put it that way. Okay. And, yeah, it's, I don't want to go into details of, like, when it's going to fail, but it's, it's too, too, well, too much to, to go through. For now, if you set it to, to fail. Anyways, so see out, in our case, will never fail. Uh, anyone else? Any questions one? Any questions two? All right. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, have a beautiful day. Didn't give you a break, but I'm letting you go five minutes early, so take that as your break. Um, uh, I see people put things in shared notes. Uh, yeah, and they removed it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, um, thank you, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful day. And uh, um, today we didn't have a quiz, so the next time you're coming, you're going to have two quizzes. Remember that. Ciao, everyone. Have a beautiful day. As usual, the recording is going to go up on the web. Bye. Professor? Yes. Navleen. Uh, professor, I want to ask something about workshop two. Uh, about your own workshop two or understanding workshop two? Understanding workshop two. Okay, then ask. It's asking class. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, there's uh, in workshop two, there's something that uh, we have to load all the customer's data okay. into a pointer. Okay. So should we like use the for loop or copy each member separately? Is does your customer have dynamic memory allocation? Uh yeah. So you have to do individually. That's a big red flag coming up. When okay. all the information of your class and structures is inside your structure, you use regular assignment when you have dynamic memory allocation or any of your data is outside of your class then you have to use individual ones got it okay yeah all right anything else nothing thank you all right have a beautiful day everyone uh professor can i ask something else of course it's for the... sure sure i have all the time go ahead <laughs> it's for workshop on diy park um because as we all it for you or in general? Um, I don't know. Maybe for general, I would like to ask about how to get the user input if we're applying the C in we learned today. You can, you can, of course, you can if you want. Sure. No so problem. if we are going but to scanf works the same way, doesn't make any difference. Scanf actually works identical with this. But sure, you see it, no problem. Oh, I see. Thank you. No problem. That was it? Any last questions? Yes. All right. Any last questions, anyone? I'm just about to quit the meeting. I'm going to, ah, it's going to end. No, no question. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.